So for now, let's do a button. So let's go into a sprites and we're going to create another element in here that's going to be a class. It's going to be a button, button class. And for the button, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, the init, so we're going to define the init and we're going to pass. We need the game in there because we're going to be calling the game. We need the color for the font and we're going to do a little outline as well. So outline, outline. And we need the X and Y, which is the coordinates where we want this button. And we need the width and a height as well. And I wrote width wrong. There we go. And also, we also need the text that is going to display on the button. So self.game equals game. Self.color and self dot outline equals color and outline and self dot x self dot y equals x and y self dot width and self dot height equals width and height height and self dot text equals text. Okay. Now we're going to define a draw function, same as we did for the UI element, and we have to take the screen here. Uh, okay, this is a dot in there. Okay, that's better. And in the draw screen, we need to draw the button and put the text inside of the button, right? <coughs> For that, to draw the button with an outline, we're going to use two rectangles. So to draw a rectangle in Pygame, we're going to use the pygame.draw, the same thing that we did with the line, but instead of line, we're going to draw a rect, which takes a screen, so where we want to draw it, the same thing as the line. And then it takes the color self the color and then it's gonna take a rectangle so we need to create a rectangle in here we need to give four values the so we're creating a rectangle we need to give four values so we need to give this position and this position the same thing with the line but instead of drawing a line it's going to draw a rectangle around these positions so we give it an x and y value of this position and the x and y value of this position so for that let's give it self the x and self the y and then the other two, two is going to be self the width width and self dot height okay so the first two values is where we want to draw it and then the self dot width and self dot height is the other two values from here so we're giving the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle we get into this point here and that's it so let's try this out to see if it's working. I'm going to just draw a button here. Uh, let's put 10, 10. <coughs> oh, sorry, no, this is different. So we need to pass the game. We need to pass a color. Let's just give a white color for now and the outline. Now, actually, the color is going to be the background and the outline is going to be white. You see how you see that it's going to make sense later. X and Y 10, 10 for testing and the width is going to be 10, 10 as well. Am I so this we're not timing. OK. Let's see what this is going to do. We're going to draw into the self.screen. Let me see. Uh, we're missing the text. 
most important thing test okay it's not is it not drawing there okay I know why it's not working it's because we're painting the button with the same color as the background <laughs> so that's why we don't see it so let's just put white in here for now and okay so we have a little square in there let's make this a little bit bigger let's make a hundred in here and then a hundred by a hundred hundred by fifty maybe okay so now we have this little square drawn in there it doesn't do anything yet because we're not checking for the clicks of the mouse events let's uh, let's do the let's finish this this sprite class because we need to have a text on it as well right now we don't have any text on it so we're gonna let's just do the outline first So the outline is going to be a by game dot draw dot rect. So we're going to basically we're going to draw two rectangles, one in the background, and then a smaller one inside. The background rectangle is going to be white, because it's going to be the outline, and this middle rectangle is going to have the same color as the background. So it's going to look like it's transparent, but we're just painting the same color. So we're just going to see the outline white. To do that, so we need to draw the first rectangle with this with the position less a bit less than the inner rectangle, and the the width and the height of the background rectangle needs to be more than the width and the height of the inner rectangle. So we're gonna pass the screen here, and then we're gonna pass the outline color. And again, so it needs to be self dot x but it needs to be less than the actual position. So we're going to put self.x minus, let's say, 2, and self.y minus 2. So it's going to be 2 pixels off. And the self.width, if we just put plus 2, it's not going to work because we need to put the double of that. Otherwise, we're going to draw it before and then if we just do plus two, it's going to be in here, exactly in here. So we're going to have just the outline on top and left. In this case, we're going to do the outline plus four. So we do a bit more. So plus four. And self dot height plus four. Let's see how this is working now, actually. So let's change this back to the background color. I'm going to do this. OK, so you see now we have that rectangle. Inner rectangle is the same color as the background. And then the outer rectangle is white. So we have this nice, nice outline button. OK, now let's put text on it. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing as we did here. So we could just even copy this paste it so we're gonna define a font by game the font was sys font it's gonna be Arial and let's just pass a font in here I'm gonna put 30 font size sorry and then the render we just get the text make the edges smooth and we paint it in white but now to draw if we just draw this now, let's see what's happened. You see that it's just on the corner here. We're just drawing to self.x and self.y. So we want that to be in the middle. So to do that, we're going to define two, two temporary variables for x and y. <coughs> the draw x, it's just a bit of math in here to get that centered. So just trust me. <laughs> It's going to be self.x plus the self.width divided by 2 minus, there is a formula also that we can, if we do text.get width, we can get the width of the just the text. And then we can get the height of the text as well. So we are getting the width and the height based on this text 
which is based on this font size. I hope that makes sense. We're going to get this divided by 2 as well. And then we have to do the same thing in here, self.y plus self.height, in this case, divided by 2, minus the text dot get height divided by 2. And then in here we pass draw x and draw y. <clears throat> Let's test this and see. Okay, so now that the text is in the middle of the square. Okay, we're just going to define one more function in here and then we're going to be done with all the classes. And this function is going to see to check if the mouse is over the button or not. So we're going to define a function called is over and we're going to take the mouse x and the mouse y coordinates. I'm going to show you how to get those. And we're just going to return self.x, which is the actual button, is less or equals to mouse.x or less than equals to self.x plus self.width. So we're checking if the mouse coordinates, the x mouse coordinates. So we have our button here, right? And we're checking the mouse coordinate x if it's the same, if it's more or equals to the self to x to the, the left side, and less than e less or equals to the self to x plus the width. Okay, so we check the width of the button. So we're checking if it's inside of this. And now we have to do the same thing for the y. So self dot y is so we're gonna do end self dot y is less or equals to the mouse y less or equals to self dot y plus self dot height. So we're going to return true if this is true, basically. So that's all we do, the return, and then we can pass straight away the condition. And if this condition is true, then it will return true. If it's not, then we return false. That means we're not inside of the button. OK, I think that's all for the classes. So let's just go back into your main. And now we just need to draw all the buttons into the screen and just check all the events and then we're probably going to be done. So for the buttons is a bit of a to draw every button in the screen is a bit of a testing. So you need to come here and kind of test like you put 200. Now I want a bit lower so let's put 500 in here. And then you need to kind of test until you find where you want to have the buttons, right? I have this already set up on my other games, so I'm just going to be writing down all the coordinates that goes in the middle and exactly. So let's do the main screen first. So we will be showing the snake game. And then we have to show two buttons, which is start... Let me show in here in my game we have a snake game and then we show the high score which we, we didn't define that yet. So let's do these two buttons here. There's this nice hover as well every time we hover over it. And yeah, okay, so let's do those two buttons first. The first one is going to be start and we actually gonna have to give them names because we have to call them in here as well. So let's just do a self dot start button is equals to the start button. And for the start button it's gonna be the X position is the width divided by 2 and 
and the y is going to be 150 divided by 2 just go with me with that just to get the buttons in the middle basically <laughs> and the width we're going to do 400 no sorry the width is 150 by 50 okay this is like this actually 470 is the y so the x with the x coordinates is the width divided by 2 minus 150 divided by 2 so that will get the button centered in the middle and the y you can just pass any y wherever you want up or down so with this we're putting the button in the middle of the screen on the x-axis and then you can just put it wherever you want up or down uh, let's see so now okay so now we are centered on the x-axis but then we can put it wherever we want on the y-axis <clears throat> let's do the same thing for button called quit we're gonna call this quit and we just do the same thing but we're just gonna change the y to be a little bit lower than the start button okay so now we need to check for the events in here so we're waiting so in here is where we're gonna check if we click the button or not so how do you get the mouse X and mouse Y positions there is this function called mouse so pygame pos. This is going to return you a tuple of X and Y values of the mouse position and we store them into mouse X and mouse Y. Now let's do the motion first. So if events.type is equals to pygame.mouse motion, that means the hover. So if we move in the mouse and we go over the button, then we change the color. So we're going to do if self dot start button and we're going to call that function is over is over. And then we need to pass the mouse X and mouse Y. So if that returns true, then we do self dot start button dot color equals to dark gray and if not then we change it back to the background color uh, what did I do Is, ah, okay so I cannot draw straight away I think Okay, we're gonna need to call each of the buttons and do a draw function. Self the screen. And uh, just do the same thing for the quit button. Let's see. Okay. So this is quit button. Okay, triple object has not to be so yeah it's uh, it's because I need to do a dot color in here. I just forgot this. So otherwise, we're just we're trying to change the start button to the background color, so it's becoming a tuple of color, so it doesn't recognize. So now, if I try to run, I have all of this. I have the buttons, but they are not changing color while I hover it. That's because, as we did up here, we need to draw and flip. <coughs> So this draw and flip, we can actually put it inside of this loop. So we're doing a loop in here. So we put those in here. And I think that should work. Let's see. Uh, it's not changing. Oh, is it? Ah, it's because we're trying to change for the same color. Let me just put white in here to test. Okay, 
we're trying to change for the same color basically so let's do the light gray in here okay so if I hover over the start button it changed the color nothing happened if I click let's do for the quit as well so we're gonna do the same thing but we need to change this ones for quit and if we start so now both of the buttons have this hover nice hover option so this is to check if the mouse is in motion now we're gonna check if events dot type is equals to pi game dot mouse button down that's the one and then we're gonna do if self dot start button is over mouse dot x mouse dot y so the same thing so if we're clicking on it and then we check if it's on top of this button so in this case the start button we're gonna do self dot waiting no it's not self dot waiting it's just waiting waiting equals false so we're just changing this variable to false so we're gonna stop this loop and then we're gonna keep going to the next part so let's try this I can hover it if I press start then we start the game but right now we, we cannot end so if I try to end then we just go back to the main screen which is good but we're gonna change this text uh, let's just do for self dot quit button as well oops is is over mouse x mouse y and self dot quit so now if we press quit we just quit with the exit code of zero okay so this part here is done what we need to do now is to do something here so if we go game over we're going back to this screen but we need to show something else we're not going to show the title we're going to show a game over uh, title but we're still going to be showing the two buttons okay so let me just separate this we're going to do buttons and then in here the way we're going to track this is if the self dot playing is true or false so whenever we die we set this to false so that means it goes back yeah we're gonna have to put a, this variable in here self dot plain we're gonna initialize that as true because every time we come in here that game is gonna be true so we're gonna show the main screen so we're gonna do if not self dot plain so if the self dot plain is false that's because we died otherwise is the first time we're opening the game so you're gonna do that and then else we gain we've opened the game for the first time we show the title screen so if self dot plane is false then we're gonna do the same thing as this one but we're gonna change this to game over exclamation mark in there same settings now we have this and if we start and then let's just take a few food in here so I can kill myself so if I die it shows game over if I quit and then I start again it shows the title snake game <coughs> so now let's show the score so let's create a variable here on the top which is gonna be self dot score so we can keep track of it so the score is going to start at zero and as we're here already let's just do yeah I was going to do the high score already but let's do that one after so let's do the score first every time we eat a food so in the updates we're checking if the snake eats a food let's just increase this score score plus equals one Okay, so that's going to be an integer. It's going to always increase by one. If we print self dot score, and then we start the game. So you see, every time now it's one, 
I take another one. Now it's two. Uh, let's take another one. Now it's three. Take another one. Ah, I hit myself by accident. Okay, <laughs> you get the idea. So let's show that when we do game over. Let's uh, print something. So let's see, how can we do this? I have the coordinates in here already. So we're going to do 14 and 13. Then in here, you can pass F strings in there. So you can, you can draw uh, the value of variables in there, actually. So we're going to do score is self.score. So I think every time, so let's start and then let's take a few bytes. Ah, uh, I score, it's very okay. Let's see, let's make this a bit smaller. No, that's why I wanted to put the font size in here. Start, okay, two, three, okay. So, and it shows the score in here. Okay, that is the score shown. Now we just need to save this, uh, the high score into a separate file. To do that, we're gonna create another two functions and just before the main screen here. It's gonna be a get high score and save, save score. Okay, so the get high score, now we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be opening files and things like that. So to get the high score, let's just create a new file. So in my snake game, I'm just creating a file called highscore.txt. So we have this file in here, let's put it on the side. It's going to put a high score of three in there. So to get that number, we're gonna open the file. So the file is called high score, and then we're gonna open as read mode, and we're gonna call this file. So if you don't know too much about this, this is what it's doing. I'm creating a variable called file, and then I'm opening this file here as read mode. Basically, it's that, and then everything that I put in here, I I can do things while this file is open. Once I go out of this, the file closes by itself, basically. So inside of here, we're gonna do a variable called score, and so we can do file dot read. So this is the variable that I passed. We call that variable with the read. That means we're reading all the contents inside of this high score text and we're storing that into this score variable. And we're just going to return the, because it's going to come as a string. So we need to return this. Oops. We need to return that as an integer value. And on the top of everything here, we're going to create a self dot high score equals self dot get high score so we're gonna assign this value three as an integer to the high score so we can keep the track of the high score and in here on the main screen we're gonna output this high score independently if we are in the main menu or if the game game over so we're always gonna output that for that we're just gonna copy this. Uh, we're gonna change this to 12 and this one to 11. This one is gonna be high score the text. We just output the high score. Okay, so we have a high score of three in there. We don't show the score or anything. And then if we do things here, we take a food, take another one, and then I die. Show a high score, and then this score in here. I need to move this high score, maybe one to the right. 
That looks slightly better. One more. Yeah, it's not perfectly aligned, but it's okay. Let me die. Okay. Do one less actually. So let me die. Okay. It's not perfect aligned, but it's okay. So now we show the high score and then we show the score as well. Now we need to update this. So if the score is more than the high score, we need to update that. And in that, we're going to save it. So we're going to take this value, we're going to check against the score. If it's more, then we're just going to update this. And then we're going to get that score again. And we're going to update on the file. So to save it, again, we're going to open this. But this time we're going to open as a write mode and we're going to do as file again. And inside here we're going to do if self.score is more than self.high score, then we write file.write a string of self.score. So we need to call this in the beginning of the main screen self dot save score uh, let's try this again so one two three four five okay so now we're not showing the high score the score is five let's quit now we update it in here if we run again we have the score of five Okay, so now in here, instead of displaying the high score, we need to display the high score if the high score is more than the score. Otherwise, we display the score, so we can update that. So for that, I'm just going to do a inline if statement in here. So we say self the high score if high score is more than the score, else we show the score. Uh, something is wrong. What's wrong? Uh, we need an else in statement in here actually because otherwise it's gonna. Yeah, if your score is not more than high score, then we're not gonna do this and then it's just gonna delete that. So we need to do this and we need to write. A string of self dot high score in there. Uh, let me just put another integer in there. Okay, so we have a high score of three. Now let's get some points. One, two, three, three, four, five. And let's kill yourself. If I can, there we go. So now it's showing the score is five. The high score is updated to five. If I quit the game, then the high score is updated in here. If I go to the game again, the high score is still five. And then you can beat that. Okay, I think that's all for this tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand it. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the codes. I'll leave you the, the codes down in the description as well. See you next time.